Do you read or study the Bible regularly? If so, what could you tell me about the book of Habakkuk? What scriptures from Habakkuk can you quote? The prophet Habakkuk lived about six centuries before Christ and was a contemporary of Nahum and Zephaniah. Although both the prophet Habakkuk and the book of Habakkuk are relatively unknown, we intend to bring them out of obscurity this morning with one of the most significant quotes of the Old Testament. Habakkuk 2 verse 4 reads, quote, Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. That last phrase, the just shall live by faith, is quoted in three different New Testament books. The Apostle Paul uses it to make his case in Romans 1 verse 17, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Then the phrase plays a role in Paul's argument in Galatians 3 verse 11, but that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Finally, we see the Apostle Paul utilize this golden nugget in Hebrews 10, verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. No wonder the Hebrew writer uses this great passage to set up one of the New Testament's most memorable chapters. Jewish Christians face pressure from their Jewish peers to drift back into Judaism with the Mosaic law, the Levitical priesthood, and its animal sacrifices. Their weakened resolve compelled the Holy Spirit to inspire the Apostle Paul to write the book of Hebrews. By using the words of their prophet, Paul found familiar territory to establish that if they really were the people of God, and they would follow the example of the great heroes of the Jewish faith. When we talk about someone being just, we mean someone deemed righteous. The Greek word here is translated just 33 times and righteous 41 times. This helps when we read Paul's summary of the gospel in the book of Romans. First of all, as Paul puts it in Romans 3 verse 10, there is none righteous, no, not one. This leads naturally to the question, how does a just or righteous God justify or render righteous people with an ungodly past? The Apostle Paul anticipates the question in Romans 4 verse 5, But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. The Spirit informs us in Romans 3 verse 26 that God might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Or put another way, that God might be righteous and make him righteous who believes in Jesus. Paul adds in Romans 5 verse 19, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Don't misunderstand. Those justified or made righteous must change their lives. The belief the Apostle Paul presents is not the easy believism so common in Christendom in our day. The Apostle says in 1 John 3, verse 7, Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. And then in verse 10, And this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. This morning, we'll notice a series of illustrations of how the just shall live by faith. After our song. There was no
Hebrews chapter 11 serves as an abbreviated survey of Old Testament Bible history. More importantly, no chapter in the Bible is more saturated with the topic of faith. Hebrews 11 verse 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. When the writer says faith is the substance of things hoped for, he's not crossing his fingers. He's not agonizing in uncertainty. The word hope refers to a confident expectation. So faith is the substance or the reality of things that a Christian may confidently expect to enjoy. Faith makes them real, though invisible. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the objective indication of the reality of things unseen. Of course, faith is not absolute proof because once something is seen, it can no longer involve faith. Faith gives us sufficient confirmation based on the collective, harmonious testimony of reputable men. In a book that demonstrates over and over again credibility. As Paul puts it in Romans 10 verse 17, So then faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of God. Remember that. Faith comes from hearing or reading the word of God. We see the prominence of faith in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Friends, you cannot please God without faith. It's absolutely impossible. Now, don't miss this. Faith means believing that God is, that God exists, but true faith means more than that. Faith demands we believe that God rewards those who diligently seek Him. Folks, there are only two places to go. We're either rewarded or we're punished. So true biblical faith, the faith that justifies, that saves, demands believing that God will not reward everyone, but instead, he'll reward those who diligently seek him. You see, no one is getting into heaven by accident. The reward is only extended to those who have purposefully sought to please him. This kind of faith saves. Back to Hebrews 10, verse 38. The just shall live by faith. From what we've learned, that is the same as the righteous shall live by faith. Simply accepting the reality of God's existence is not enough. Mental acknowledgement of the risen Christ does not qualify as living by faith. By faith, the just shall live. By faith, the righteous shall live. Faith is not merely an idea. Faith is a lifestyle. Being saved by faith means being saved by what's on the inside because of what faith produces on the outside. Watch how God shows us what faith looks like. Repeatedly in chapter 11, Paul follows a simple formula. By faith plus the name of a righteous man or woman plus how the righteous man or woman lived, how the righteous man or woman responded to God. In Hebrews 11, verse 4, the writer shows how faith impacts worship. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it he being dead still speaks. Without faith... One cannot worship God acceptably. A flawed faith generates false worship. 
if you cannot read how you worship right out of the book, you cannot claim the faith that Abel had. And that's the only kind of faith that God accepts that'll save a man. Abel gave God what he asked for, a bloody animal sacrifice, while Cain substituted a bloodless agricultural offering. Jesus confirms that faith leads to proper worship in John 4, verse 24, where he says, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Please, don't thank God will render you righteous if you, like Cain, substitute your own worship for what you read in the New Testament. Hebrews 11, verse 5. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Enoch pleased God with godly living day in and day out. Those who live by faith do so not only on the Lord's day, they do so seven days a week. Those who live by faith act with reverential fear on behalf of their family's spiritual welfare. Hebrews 11, verse seven, by faith Noah, the just, how did Noah live? Move with godly fear prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. By faith, Noah, now watch the action words, moved and prepared. Listen, friend, when you ignore the warnings God gives against worldliness, you do not demonstrate the kind of faith Noah had. When you demonstrate indifference, to your children's spiritual welfare by haphazard church attendance, irregular Bible reading and infrequent Bible discussions and infrequent prayer, does that demonstrate the faith we're reading about? Of course not. I like the directness of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8 through 10. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Of course, God doesn't talk us, to us today as he did to Abraham. But if he did, and told you to move to Brazil, Nigeria, or Russia, how would you react? God ordinarily asks much less of you and me than that. And how do we react? Do you have faith? Abraham did. He obeyed. By faith, the just man obeys. That's what we read right here. By faith, we can do for God with his help what we could not do otherwise. Jesus taught in Matthew 17, verse 20, if you have faith as a mustard seed, nothing will be impossible for you. Paul wrote in Philippians 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In the same spirit, Hebrews 11, verse 11 reads, by faith Sarah bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand, which is by the seashore. Senior women, imagine being told at age 90 that you would be having a child. How would you react? Sarah carried the term, the child to term, rather, and gave birth to a healthy child whose posterity Fill the earth. Through her, one child, the Jewish nation, Jesus and Esau's descendants came. The just shall live by faith. On to Hebrews 11, 
Verse 17, by faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, in Isaac your seed shall be called, concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense. By faith, the just, the righteous, like Abraham, put God first, even ahead of family. By faith, we can be sure that obeying God will always be in our family's best interest, no matter how difficult, no matter how troubling it may appear. Watch the action words that follow the just who live by faith to the very end, even on their deathbed in Hebrews 11, verse 20 through 22. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshiped, leaning on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones. Those who live by faith keep the works of God before their mind until the very end. They finish strong. Let's move to Hebrews 11, verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. The righteous, like Moses' parents, Amram and Jochebed, fear God over government. We can be thankful we don't have to make the choice Moses' parents had to make. Some places, some people rather, in some places still do. From 1979 to 2015, China enforced a law limiting one child per couple. In some cities, residents who gave birth to a second child paid a social child raising fee between three to six times their last year's income. Wealthy parents paid fines in the tens of thousands in U.S. dollars. After a second child, 107 million Chinese women underwent mandatory sterilization. During this period of extreme social engineering, the lives of 336 million babies were aborted, most of which were forced. Much of the brutality executed on women seven to eight m months pregnant is too graphic to share. Would you walk in faith like Amram and Jochebed if it came to this? Mark it down. The just shall live by faith. Moses teaches us about the faith that sacrifices in Hebrews 11, verse 24. By faith Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Genuine faith does this. It empowers us to choose loyalty over royalty to choose the people of God over the people of the world, to choose the reproach of Christ over the riches of this world. By faith, the just shall overcome the difficulties, challenges, even persecutions that may come against them. Do you think that you have insurmountable obstacles in your life? Do you think you suffer much for your faith? Compare your life to the list that we read about in Hebrews 11, beginning with verse 32. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, 
not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. Jewish history says that's what happened to Isaiah. They were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. All of what we have read is even more impressive because none of these people had what we have. And yet, they remained faithful. They didn't have the New Testament. They didn't have the death of Christ, the resurrection. Hebrews 11, verse 40. God, having provided something better for us, that these should not be made perfect apart from us. None of them had Jesus. None of them enjoyed the blessings of the new covenant. None of them were in the body of Christ. And yet, we read in Hebrews 11, verse 13 through 16, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. <laughs> what inspiring words. They walk by faith and not by sight. They could see with the eyes of faith what they could not see with their fleshly orbs. The Holy Spirit confronts believers today with the same challenge issued to Jewish believers in Hebrews chapter 10, beginning with verse 35. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For you a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. The just shall live by faith. There's no doubt about that. The only question is, are you truly living by faith? Won't you today begin living by faith? Won't you believe the story of Jesus? Won't you act on the truths of God's word? Galatians 3, verse 26. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Stay with us for a closing word after our song. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. 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 Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Thank you for watching Let the Bible Speak. For a free copy of this message, 1276, from Habakkuk to Hebrews, you can call us toll-free at 800-380-5827. You may request at no cost the Truth Freeze Bible Study Course. Watch videos, hear audio, or read transcripts of 500 gospel message at letthebiblespeak.com. Do us a favor and visit, like, and share the Let the Bible Speak Facebook page. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to view the weekly message at your convenience. We say with the Apostle Paul in Romans 16, verse 16, the churches of Christ salute you. Until next week, goodbye, and may God bless you.